screen is visible or not dinesh kumar dinesh kumar yes yes sir my screen is visible yes sir it's visible sir it's visible sir okay so what was the things we were covering in the yesterday class like we saw about that ost distance like we calculated as some sir okay uh, okay fine so uh, i think uh, i started the recording also uh, once again good morning to everyone yesterday class yes uh, we have a seen and discussed about that ost uh, overtaking side distance and little bit confusions was uh, happened with respect to the unit also and that is the way and yesterday also the problems which we have a uh, solved there some mistake is there so that's what again i have uh, recalculated and for the divisions i have a given when it is coming to the meter per second and the second and all so what are the equations we have to follow for the modifications when it is coming to the kilometer so everything i have a given as a capital letters so that way we have an segregated and this is the general equations osd d1 d2 d3 when it is coming to the meter per second if it is coming to the kilometer per hour 0.278 you have to introduce as an in corrections factor then you will be getting the ost value then the small s the equation is 0.7 vb plus 6 uh, so this is based on the, the kinetic energy of into 80 square plus 80 using that particular equation so finally we are achieving this particular equations but no need to go in the micro level the final equations is 0.7 vb plus 6 but when it is coming to the kilometer the conversions have happened and the final coefficient is 0.2 into vb plus 6 then the other thing that reaction time reaction time is 2 second we are assuming if not given in the problem then the t is nothing but root of 4s divided by a at the same time when it is coming to the kilometer 14.4s divided by capital a so that capital a what are the things are coming with respect to the design speed i have a given if not design speed with respect to the vehicle speed of a so that speed is considered then this is the with respect to the small a when it is coming to the meter and the second at the same time sometimes the speed of the vehicle of slow moving vehicle is not given in the problem that case you have to what you have to do in the sense you know the design speed from the design speed if you are reducing 4.5 meter per second that is considering as a slower speed of the vehicle but when it is coming to the kilometer so v minus 16 kilometer per hour so this is an a modifications you have to do it so hope uh, this kind of the comparisons uh, you will be getting the clarity but yesterday while we are calculating the problem what we have done in the mistake in the sense Uh, so the yes what i have shown in the sense that is with respect to the 0.7 but that was the mistake we supposed to use 0.2 okay vb plus 6 and the t i used 4 but i supposed to use 14.4 s divided by capital a so this is in a small mistake which has happened in that yesterday class with respect to the two problem for the better understandings i have given the comparisons with respect to the individual formula and the assumptions of acceleration the same again i have calculated for the same problem 100 kilometers they have given and all the values we were assumed 100 km vb nothing but 100 minus 16 84 km t is 2 second and a is 1.92 yes is recalculated using 0.2 vb plus 6 t is 14.4s divided by a and this is the two values we are getting finally we are applying and you are getting the osd value as an 770 meter meanwhile i have told that the minimum overtaking zone is nothing but thrice the value what we estimated as an osd at the same time the desirable length or the maximum length is considering as an five times the what is the value of the osd so this is in a two values has been estimated 
and this will be the yeah another problem 70 km per hour they have a given 40 km per hour they have a given for the vehicle a and the vehicle b so 0 0.9 meter per second square given so i have a converter divided by the 0 0.278 so you will be getting the capital a and small t is 2 second v is 70 vb is 40 and we know the s equations t equations you try to apply both the value then finally you apply in that uh, equations so you come to know what will be the ost S then the uh, overtaking zone you have to draw where we can post the things okay so the two type of the post we uh, so two type of the post we were placing from the ost distance then the total thrice so here what we are assuming in the sense minimum length so with respect to the minimum length the overall length is estimated then based on that the final 280 meter osd value we have a given same same only the value has been changed what we have discussed in the yesterday class so this is with respect to the osd and So probably uh, the methodology framework, everything is seen. The slide modifications happen in the equations. Okay. Slide modifications happen in that uh, equations as well as the calculations. So you just go through whenever you are getting the time. The PPT will be circulated in the file folder of MST. Okay. So this is on a second component we have a study in the side distance. Okay and other than that we have a known that over uh, other side distance like a intermediate side distance for the highway with the design speed 80 kilometer as well as the headlight side distance so basically what we are defining in the sense the headlight side distance is nothing but what we can say the sst so you know what is the sst equations the same equations we are assuming as an uh, headlight side distance so the headlight is another way of replicating your safe stopping side distance so there is a no differ so this is the definitions which we already discussed in the last week class what is the meaning of the headlight and the intermediate side distance uh, headlight side distance is uh, what we can say nothing but uh, with respect to the light visibility, when you're trying to travel during the night time, you can able to stop your vehicle safely without collide or without meeting any accident with your opponent vehicle. And the intermediate side distance is nothing but where we are, uh, it is need to consider when the overtaking distance are not provided, like at the overtaking zone we have seen, right? And not exactly the overtaking zone, but in the intermediate, we were providing some of the uh, zone to overtake the vehicle with respect to the SST value. So that is considering as an uh, intermediate side distance. So the headlight side distance is nothing but the SST. And the intermediate side distance is defined as twice the safe stopping side distance. So this is a IRC recommendations has given for estimating the headlight side distance and intermediate side distance and we all know that the sst equation is nothing but 0.278 v into t plus v squared divided by 254 into f so v is nothing but the design speed what it is given 80 km per hour this is a stopping side distance so the reaction time is nothing but the 2.5 second then again you apply v square value 254 into frictions value the maximum the longitudinal friction is 0.35 so when you are applying you will get what will be the sst value in the meter so maybe i can assume as an x1 so this sst is nothing but the headlight side distance at the same time, as I mentioned that intermediate side distance twice than the X1 when you are applying. So you come to know the new value X2 meter. 
so this is an another possibilities uh, we can expect the questions might be asking to estimate the headlight side distance don't get much confusions so the headlight side distance is nothing but your stopping side distance only okay so this is in a brief introductions about the side distance stopping safe stopping side distance overtaking headlight and the intermediate side distance so all these parameters need to be considered else what will happen in the sense the ultimate uh, ultimate issues is that accident once the accidents are happening so there is a loss with respect to the cost accident costs are happening with respect to the human life losses property damages vehicle damages so all these issues are happening when one accidents we are experiencing so this is in a one way we can understand the parameter about the side distance so this is your syllabus uh, in the second unit is nothing but the highway geometric design where we have started in detail about the factors affecting the geometric design which is in the continuations of our first unit and the side distance we have studied in the very detail the next and the important component what we are going to cover in the sense alignment so we have the two type of the alignment one is the horizontal and another one will be the vertical alignment so let us discuss about that alignment so the alignment is basically nothing but the positions or the layout of the center line of the highway on the ground is called the alignment so the previous unit i have shown that when we are going for the new highway we are trying to identify what will be the center line we are fixing the center line as an design reference then the left and the right we are providing the given number of the lane so according to that the alignments are happening so this is with respect to the design and the same can be explained the positions or the layout of the center line what we have a design on the paper when we are trying to execute on the ground so that is considering as an alignment of the practical way and it has an two different kind of the alignment under the highway one is the horizontal one and another will be the vertical one in the horizontal it will be considering as an a straight path and it is deviating from the straight path and horizontal curve will be there vertical alignment is nothing but ups and down of your road so that is considering as an gradient and vertical curve so these are the two major type under the type different kind of the design classifications parameters are there so where this alignment basically plays the major role some of the example is that hilly area so definitely we all have that good experience by traveling in the hilly station so much have been bends are there so horizontal bending will be there then the ups and downs filling also there so the hilly area the alignment is playing the major role second will be the bridge because the gradient increasing the gradient and decreasing the gradients are happening connecting intermediate town example if you want to travel between the new delhi to rurki we can provide the straight away the path but in the middle merut is one of the major city we cannot skip we cannot exclusively provide the facilities or the road infrastructure to connect that particular city in that point of time instead of providing this kind of the root path when we are trying to connect to the new delhi to merut merut to the road key so the diversions happening with respect to the design as well as the implementation so those kind of that diversions is coming under the alignment study at the same time in case if you want to avoid this particular city and providing another route so there is also one of the requirement so this is some of the selected example where the alignment is playing the major role as i discussed earlier when we are not providing the proper highway alignment what will happen the accidents are happening high numbers so this is an old statistic but still it is in a significant number with respect to the number of accident and the number of persons killed and injured so other than that the main loss is cost 
so there are four costs are increasing okay the construction cost of that particular project is increasing when the alignment design is not done properly once you done improper alignment constructions then the maintenance cost is relatively high when if it is not in the proper way your vehicle operating cost is also increasing example so much bend and turn when you are providing if it is not required but you provided what you are doing ultimately you are doing acceleration decelerations and applying the brake that will increasing the fuel if uh, decreasing the efficiency of the fuel which ultimately increase your usage of the petrol or the diesel and when we are applying the brake acceleration decelerations behavior the wear and tear properties of the vehicles is getting affected which i'll Uh, which is increasing the service rate of your vehicle as well as it is reducing the life span of your particular vehicle so in that case the improper alignment increasing the vehicle operating cost finally it increase the accident cost which we already discussed so this is the four major uh, losses which we are experiencing if you are not providing the proper alignment of the road on the usage level and let's narrow down with respect to the horizontal unit then we will see the vertical alignment so horizontal alignment is nothing but the most important features which influencing the efficiency as well as the safety level of that particular road if you are traveling from this particular path to this particular path and if you want to change your vehicle do you think that will it possible to provide the road in 90 degree the car will go straight and uh, practically will it possible no it is highly difficult to take the turn when it is coming to the 90 degree of the turning when you are changing from path a to b direction that is the time we are providing this kind of that curve we have a provided to make the smooth turning of the vehicle from one direction to the another direction and when we are trying to provide this kind of that alignment the speed of the vehicle is giving the major criteria what will be the design speed 100 km per hour 80 km per hour so according to that we are providing what will be the radius of this particular turning curve then the topography whether it will be the plain terrain or the rolling terrain mountainous so those kind of the topographic characteristics is influencing traffic factors so other traffic parameters how it is influencing so probably uh, we can say that q discharge how it will be there uh, with respect to the different classifications of the vehicle mode how it is happening so n number of the parameters or the factors are the traffic so that need to be controlling the design criteria then the volume and the capacity so 5000 will be the volume we are experiencing the capacity will be the 7000 or the 5000 and the capacity is the 3000 so volume capacity and their ratio how it is existing and how it is considered for the future prediction so those parameter is also influencing finally the environmental and the other factors uh, so it is a straight forward term whether it will be the snow happen or the rainy more time it is happening rainfall is high uh, so the different kind of the environmental conditions and the, some other related parameters also Uh, significantly influencing when it is coming to the horizontal alignment so under the horizontal alignment the first element is horizontal curve so this is the portions is considering as a horizontal curve the second will be the super elevations when we are trying to turn there is a possibilities not possibilities so definitely the centrifugal force is acting to negotiate that centrifugal force we are providing the super elevations by increasing the width of the outer edge of the pavement so this is the way we were providing uh, animations wise and the practically how it is provided the another second important parameter is super elevation the third will be the tangent uh, at the end of the curve portions some length we were provided the transition curve length or the tangent we can say then the extra widening when it is coming to the hilly stations and all so when the turning is there 
there is a highly mandatory to provide the extra widening else the vehicles there is a high possibilities to vehicle skid or roll when the turning is coming if you are not providing that extra widening then there is a high probability the vehicle get away from that particular portion so the widening of the pavement on the horizontal curve especially at the hilly stations it is mandatory the finally the setback distance when you are traveling here opposite vehicle you can able to see it so that is nothing but your stopping side distance which we already discussed so that is also another major design element we can say so this is the five major design element horizontal curve super elevations transition curve or the tangent extra widening and setback distance so let us discuss about the horizontal curve so the horizontal highway curve is a curve in a plan to provide a change in directions to the center line of the road so with respect to the center line when we are trying to turning so how the changes we are providing this curve alone we are defining as an a centrifugal force as uh, sorry horizontal curve so when the vehicle is turning in this particular curve the vehicle is experiencing the centrifugal force due to the turning so uh, the force p is acting outward when we are trying to turn that particular curve so the p so the p the force is defined as an mv squared divided by r so we know the equations for the force here we are multiplying and dividing by the gravity accelerations due to the gravity so m into g is considering as the weight of the vehicle v is the velocity of the vehicle and divided by g into r what we are going to say from this equation is that when you are traveling in the horizontal curve you are experiencing the centrifugal force which the p is acting towards the outward directions with the magnitude of w into v squared divided by g into r when you are not able to negotiate this particular of that magnitude then there is a high probability of your vehicle is skidding or overturning so this two issues will be happening so to negotiate this value we have to provide some of the standard design on the field so let us see what we are defining overturning effect and the skidding effect so this this is the vehicle so center of the gravity is there so the vehicle p is acting outward and the load the weight of the vehicle is acting as an w and this is the center the wheel width is considering as an b and it is the middle b by 2 b by 2 it is acting the height where the force we are facing is considering as an h so basically the overturning moment the p is estimated as an p into h the force into the height how well you are facing so p into h to restore that so we are generating restoring moment with respect to the weight of the vehicle so that is nothing but w into b by 2 so under the equilibrium conditions overturning moment supposed to be equal to the restoring moment p into h is equal to w b divided by 2 p divided by w it is considering as an b divided by 2 h so this is some things we are estimating this p divided by w should be less than or equal to b divided by 2 h else there is a chance of skidding so the value is more than the overturning moment is more than the restoring moment so we are assuming so then there is a high possibilities of the overturning effect so this is the things one way we can explain how we need the safer value the p divided by w should be less than or equal to p divided by h the b is nothing but the width of the uh, vehicle so the distance between the wheels we can say then the height where the p is acting then if you are applying the coefficients so finally you are getting what will be the value so this is a one with respect to the overturning at the same time skidding is happening so when the skid is happening so that can be explained with respect to the same force so example you can assume so this is the same your vehicle okay 
your two wheels are there and your force p is acting so according to the force p the weight is applying here at the same time you may assume this will be the r a tire pressures will be there or b will be there so according to that when the force is applying the force is applying here f b will be there f a will be there so the f a is basically it is depending upon the friction as well as this force r a the same time the f b is considering as an f and r b so this is the way we can assume so how the skid skid is basically depending upon the frictions coefficients of the frictions between the tire and the pavement by considering this the p they were assuming that it is the total f a plus p f b so the p is equilibrium conditions f a plus f b we are assuming so f into r a plus f into r b we are applying it is very simple only if you are taking f outside so r a plus r b so this r a r b is nothing but the w okay so upward and the downward so this r a plus r b is nothing but the w then what will be the criteria previously we have seen p divided by w the w is coming another directions and this will be the f so one way we have a seen the p value supposed to be less than or equal to p divided by 2 h we have a seen at the same times the frictions also you have to provide so within that limit else then there is a high possibility of meeting an accident so this is a true criteria with respect to the design you should understand uh, how the horizontal is uh, curve is the centrifugal force is acting to negotiate that centrifugal force uh, there is a if you are not negotiating the overturning and the skidding issues are happening so to avoid the skidding and the overturning so this kind of the two design uh, criteria we are designing and we are implementing on the field so probably this will be the understanding how the horizontal curves we are curve we are designing Uh, we are not going to cover any problem since it is a concepts oriented and we cannot expect the problem also for the better understanding you go through this uh, properties how it is existing and when it is coming to the design element the very Im important one is nothing but the super elevation so basically the super elevations as i told that the centrifugal with this behavior we can explain Uh, when the vehicle is trying to turn that horizontal curve the centrifugal force is acting okay due to that previously we have a seen two issues are happening overturning and the skidding are happening okay to negotiate or to avoid those kind of that issues on that particular curve what we can able to do so we have to design the pavement accordingly right so that design is nothing but we are introducing what we can say the super elevations okay by increasing the width of the outer portion of your road or the pavement stretch in the outer outer edge e is equal to e into b so we i will explain what this value can be considered okay so when you are trying to provide that particular value so that is considering as an a super elevation so e is nothing but the height how much height you want to raise it e is nothing but we have the super elevations value what ratios we are providing nothing but turn t x and y dx divided by dy the b is nothing but the width width of the road it might be the 7 meter or the 3.5 meter according to that we are providing and we are trying to estimate it so this is the way so the explanation is given in order to counteract the effect of the centrifugal force and to reduce the tendency of the vehicle to overturn or skid the outer edge of the pavement is raised with respect to the inner edge so that is considering as an a super elevations or cant or banking so this is in a three terms we can refer that particular super elevations e value 
so basically it is defined as an e okay so this is with respect to the super elevations and basically the equations for the super elevation is super elevations okay super elevations so e basically the term is e okay so the e plus f is equal to v square divided by g into r so when the speed is considering as an a meter per second and the radius of the curve is considering as an a meter at the same time e plus f is equal to v squared divided by 127 into r so here what we have done in the sense the v is converted to the kilometer per hour r is considering as an a meter alone so that is the way the equations are modified and the coefficients are introduced so here the e is nothing but the rate of super elevations we can consider as an a tan theta also tan theta also e f is design value of later friction coefficient the first class itself i have told that the f having in a two e values one is the longitudinal effect then second will be the later effect so here we are considering and assuming the later effect and the maximum permitted value for the f is 0.15 so this is the things with respect to the f v is as we know that the design speed r is nothing but the radius of the horizontal curve g is accelerations due to the gravity you know the value is 9.8 meter per second square so this is with respect to the super elevations and irc has given the standard for the super elevation so with respect to the different kind of the terrain type so what we are doing why they were finalizing the value as per the irc in the sense the same road the fast moving vehicle like the car two wheeler or driving the same road we can able to see the heavy vehicle with a heavy load one example is the bullock cart or the truck we can able to see with respect to the load by taking the dense materials so the both type of the scenarios need to be considered according to that we are providing the maximum super elevations so when it is coming to the plain and rolling terrain the irc is recommended 7% as an a super elevations value 0.07 which is nothing but when it is coming to the hilly roads hill roads so the irc is recommending the 10% at the same time when it is coming to the urban road okay with respect to the frequent intersections with respect to the good volume traffic volume so they have limited the maximum super elevations value as an 4 percentage so this is the things they have given with respect to the maximum super elevations value maximum super elevations value with respect to the different terrain type at the same time we need to provide the minimum super elevations value also so there is no definitions or there is no details has been given so what we have to do in the sense the chamber value the rainfall value what we have provided so that need to be considered as an a minimum super elevations value so the chamber the first unit itself we have seen this particular term for the rainfall purpose we have provided this chamber with respect to the minimum gradient so that gradient is we are finalizing as an a minimum super elevations value if it is not provided in the particular problems or the design concept so this is with respect to the super elevations what is the equations and what are the standard value we are following in continuation of that how we are designing the super elevations 
not practically in the uh, theoretically design of the super elevations i will explain the step of the design of super elevation probably we will cover the problem in the next week from the problem definitely you will be getting the good uh, knowledge how to design the super elevation okay so design of super elevation there is a four major step is there for designing the super elevation step 1 what we are doing in the sense in the problems what we are exactly assuming in the sense the super elevations is designed by considering the 70 percentage of the design speed so the design speed is given in the problem we cannot take uh, directly the design speed for designing the super elevations 75 percentage of the design speed only consider so that way we can modify your equation e is equal to basically your equation is v squared divided by 127 into r in the previous sections we have a seen okay 127 into r so here e is nothing but 75 percentage of your design speed divided by 127 into r finally what we are getting is sense e is equal to v squared divided by 225 into r so this will be the your equation okay first step the design speed is given in your equation the radius also given using this particular equations you are estimating what will be the super elevations while designing the irc is recommended to assume the 75 percentage of the design speed in the calculations also in the during the calculations we can neglect the frictions value because the equation is nothing but e plus f right the f is neglected so from that assumptions we were estimating the e value step 2 what we are doing in the sense we are comparing what we were estimated the e value is estimated and you know what will be the terrain type basically if the terrain type is specified according to that you can take it whether it will be the 7 percentage or the 10 percentage or the 4 percentage if it is not given so we assume that it is in a plain terrain and the allowable super maximum uh, maximum value of the super elevation is 7 percentage or 0.07 from this equations you are estimating what will be the e value if the value is less than or equal to 0.07 then keep that particular value if it is exceed more than 0.07 then you have to fix the e value as an 0.07 only example here if you are getting e value as an 0.03 then your super elevation is 0.03 only if the value is 0.13 then you we cannot provide this much super elevations on the field ultimately it leads to the accident so that case what we have to do in the sense we have to assume and we have to finalize that we are providing the super elevations as an a maximum super elevations which is nothing but e is equal to 0.07 so this kind of that comparisons and the calculations are happening from that we are finalizing the final e value so if there is no changes on the e value then there is no further steps are required you just to stop it as it is but the e values are increasing and you are finalizing the maximum e value as an a final value then there is a need to recheck your coefficients of the frictions because we assumed the coefficients of the frictions is negligible since the e value is coming under the limit if it is going beyond the limit again you have to revisit what will be the f value so step 3 what we are doing in the sense you know that equations e plus f is equal to v squared divided by 127 into r so this is an equations okay so in that equations what we are doing in the sense we are estimating the f value f value is nothing but v square divided by 127 into r minus e 
this e is nothing but here you have a finalized that maximum value of 0.07 right this 0.07 is considering as an a value okay so this value you are applying here so when we are applying here you will get the value of the f now what we are doing the sense you know what will be the permissible value for the f the f is nothing but 0.15 if the value is less than or equal to 0.15 then your design is considerable you finalize e value as an 0.07 and whatever f value you are getting you can finalize it if it is going to more than 0.15 then there is a need to revise your design speed of the vehicle so design speed of the vehicles may be the 100 km per hour we have assumed but the e is not satisfied also the f is also not satisfied then the 100 km per hour is not allowed so again using this equations we estimate what will be the v value so according to that you will be getting the new design speed maybe the 60 km or the 40 km the reduced speed you might be getting from that particular equation so uh, when you are checking for your coefficients of the friction if you are getting example 0.11 then it is fine there is a no need of the step 4 but if it is going 0.23 or more than that then it is not permitted in that particular point of time what we are doing the sense we are finalizing your f value as an 0.15 e value we are finalizing as an 0.07 and when we are trying to apply in your initial equations and you recalculate what is the v value so the same value e is nothing but 0.07 plus 0.15 is equal to revised design speed divided by 127 into r radius is given in the problem when you are applying the radius value finally you come to know what will be the design revised design speed in kilometer per hour okay so this is the things with respect to the design of super elevations it is very simple uh, maybe um, without problem when you are looking it might be tricky for you but when you are trying to solve few problems so definitely you will be getting the better clarity how to do the design of super elevations okay so students here i am concluding the today's session so basically we have a started with respect to the horizontal uh, sorry we started with it overtaking side distance yesterday we have a discussed two problem but the mistakes in that equations again i have a highlighted with respect to the unit each parameters what equations we have to use it so that comparisons we have done and the same the two problem solutions just i have floated very quickly so followed by we started the second important component uh, of the side distance is nothing but the headlight side distance and the final one will be the intermediate side distance so that is also covered so altogether in the side distance safe stopping side distance overtaking side distance headlight side distance intermediate side distance as well as the intersection side distance the definitions i have given but there is a problems we are not going to cover covered as in a first part of your second unit and the second component is nothing but the alignment under the alignment, we have the two vast component, horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment. We started why we need that alignment, if what will happen on the field, okay? Then we went towards the horizontal alignment. Five major elements we have seen, horizontal curve, super elevations, transition curve, extra widening and setback side distance. And the horizontal curve, we have discussed how the turning curve we are planning to provide and the role of centrifugal force we have seen when we are not negotiating the centrifugal force then there is a high chance of the vehicle over 10 or skid in that particular horizontal curve to avoid that issues 
what are the design criteria we have to follow it d divided by 2 h as well as the ef is nothing but coefficients of friction what the standard value what we have to follow so that can be explained with respect to this simple explanations the second element is nothing but the super elevations very important element when you are trying to rise your outer edge of the pavement width so that is considering as an a super elevation so to avoid that transferring effect of the skidding as well as the rolling and we have seen that simple equations e plus f is equal to v squared divided by 127 r and very simple four step problems we have followed the first step so we assume that 70 percentage of the design speed v squared divided by 225 or if it is not satisfying the comparisons from the comparisons we finalize 0.07 as an a maximum super elevation then we are recalculating the ef value if it is satisfied it is fine if it is not satisfied then again you have to go to the equations with respect to the finalized ef value we can estimate the revised allowable design speed that can be implemented on the field by using the speed limit or the speed breaker sign post or the policeman so using that we try to monitor and control the revised speed of that particular row stretch so this is in a complete details about the today content what we have a cover the next week when we are trying to solve the problem in the super elevations you will be getting the more clarity in the same content so any doubt from the today session Any doubt, student? Okay, if there is a no doubt, we will end our today's sessions. So we will see next week with the problem of super elevations. So thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Take care. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, guys. I'm just ending the session. Thank you.